All right. Welcome one and all to a wonderful evening of wacky shit and things. This is five good comic book covers that are regular but sometimes regular thing I do where I show five good comic book covers. This one we have got a theme. Remember when I had themes for some of these and then I got confused and thought every single one needed a theme. The theme for this one is something that I quite cleverly seeded throughout the week. Nostalgia. Nostalgia. And I didn't think it is nostalgia. Everyone's got their nostalgia. And the nostalgia. 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 Hefty dose of nostalgia. Makes you nostalgic for a simpler time when women didn't have rights. The theme is nostalgia. The thing I complain about certain writers catering to and then praise other writers for catering to. Who's on first? Defenders 122. My first ever issue of Defenders. And I think this is if you remove the actual comic from consideration. This is a great, great cover. This issue is incredibly disappointing, but it is a wonderful cover. This is what you want a comic to be. A ragtag team of seemingly random superheroes of varying power classes, and they are confronting an elf, an elf with a gun, a Warwick Davis with a gun. Wicket, Wicket, Ewok is massive. That is a joke about Star Wars and house music. The audience who could appreciate that joke are relatively tiny. A bit like Warwick Davis himself. One thing you will see in all but one of these covers is some art that looks a bit dicey, a bit suspect, some wonky art, but some decent composition or ideas towards the image. Is it a great cover? I didn't know, but I tells you, it's a good cover. One of the first comics, one of the first back issue sort of comics I got was fucking Death Clock, believe it or not. Watch me video on Captain America the Legend and you will understand a bit better why. But this cover lives rent free inside my head. That is what the kids say on the interwebs. This lives rent free inside my head. I don't know why I'll be charging me thoughts rent. I do think of this cover a lot. It really encapsulates my early foray into the wider Marvel universe. I love that Mr. Fantasticals is drawn. Slightly on model with Simon Waltonson, who was doing their book at the time. And then the excellent men, like Wolfman here, they are wearing their short-lived training uniforms. And that always fascinated me because I was like, why are they dressed like that? Is it a great cover? I didn't know, but I tells you, it's a good cover. Adventurers of Superman 513 from 1994. 
my first Superman comic, this one. And I have such a soft spot for this really basic, somewhat even mediocre cover. We have got Superman up front and he is shrugging off bullets. And then Gladiator, the Captain America ripoff. He is in the background being held captive. It's so unbelievably simple, but it captured my attention when I was younger. And still to this day, it makes me feel excited for Superman comics. This one, honestly all of them, except for the next one. I think they have art that isn't quite there. Superman's head is tiny on his body, for example. And altogether, he looks janky as hell. Is it a great cover? I didn't know, but this isn't going to be a catchphrase. It's... It would be a rotten catchphrase. Right, I've had much discussion about this cover in the comments to another video. I think this is an awful cover in a way. <laughs> I, I, I recorded this whole section in that voice. I'm, I'm not using it. It's terrible. This is Uncanny Excellent Men 196 by Junior Junior. And I still... I think this is an awful cover in a way. The artwork is great. It is great artwork and a great idea. But the issue doesn't really have much to do with what's on the cover. And the cover itself isn't clear to the point where I didn't even realise this was meant to be Rachel Fenix until I reviewed the issue. One of the plot lines in the book involves Dr. X teaching at a college and there is a mutie murderer on campus. And I always thought that this cover reflected that plot line. I didn't think I have ever before even realised that the body she's holding is Elliot Pride. And that is storms on the ground behind her. So, what is it doing on this video? It is a striking cover for another issue, for another story. This is an amazing image. My exposure to a lot of back issues was in the Secret Wilds II Omnibus. And so this was my insight into this period of excellent men. And this cover always stuck in my mind. And it is a powerful cover. I just maintain that the new cover for the classical excellent men reprint was more appropriate for the issue. While this is still something that is a good cover with a few acknowledgements that it's not entirely perfect. Speaking of not perfect, Robert Lee Fieldman. He has somehow wound up on one of these videos. I could go on a long rant about Robert Lee Fieldman and his artwork. But I don't know if I have much to say that hasn't been said before. There is a supreme tragedy with Robert Lee Fieldman in that he did capture the attention of readers and collectors and his art wasn't automatically terrible. It always had its problems but as early art gans it was fine. You saw it and you thought it could have been improved and the guy could develop into a good artist who better realises a style and earns the buzz that he got. 
we had the blueprint for an artist in these. But Robert Lye Fieldman never did improve. He drowned himself in ego. And nobody told him to get better. And so we got one of the most rightfully mocked and derided artists in the medium. With that said, his early stuff on New Muties and Excellent Force does capture Summit. All the problems are there, but you look at something like this, New Muties 90, and I think this is one of the better Robert Lye Fieldman pictures. It is composed well, and in general, about 70% of the time, I would say that Robert Lye Fieldman's composition is one of his stronger suits. And the anatomy isn't too broken. You look at this, and if this was like Todd McFarland's first cover, you could appreciate this as an insight into where someone's career began. Instead, it is the beginnings of an artist that wrote the coattails of PR and never got good and never even did something I can look at and say is as good as this cover he did early on in his career in 1990. It has become a long rant about Robert Lye Fieldman's art anyway. But I love this cover in spite of its faults and Robert Lye Fieldman. I love this team roster. Yeah, their feet are all conveniently hidden away. And the perspective makes little sense. But there's something about it that reminds me of the renewed focus and the energy and the direction that Robert Lye Fieldman brought to New Muties rather than the terrible art and the lazy off measures he brought to comic books as a whole. Those are five comic book covers. I left good off there because one of them was by Robert Lye Fieldman. No, I do like this New Muties one. Consider it a guilty pleasure. Consider it a regret. I like it. I would love... I would love someone to redraw this image. That would be great. Stay pretty fearful to the layout and the pauses. But just fix the Robert Lyfieldman-ness of it all. These covers... All five of them might strike you as unspectacular, but they all make me feel nostalgic. They remind me of getting into comics and certain associated memories. I will rate them seven thumbs up and hope I haven't lost any cred for including a Robert Lye Fieldman cover.